dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we're celebrating the Franciscans of the Immaculate, celebrate in our calendar, which is particularly attentive to uh, the feasts associated with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the espousals of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph. And though it is recognized uh, as a Marian feast, it's interesting to note that the origin of this feast is actually um, the desire to pay honor to Saint Joseph. And it comes from, the, the origin is that uh, one of the canons of Chartres, the, the great cathedral in France, the Gothic church, uh, one of the canons there, who is a, a priest, or it doesn't have to be always a priest, but uh, one who is got an honorary role of administration for the cathedral, he left in his will uh, this desire that on the anniversary of his death, the, the chapter of the cathedral there should solemnly honor the memory of the great patriarch Saint Joseph. And so it evolved and became, someone wrote actually a an important person within the church there wrote uh, a liturgy which was approved and the date of the death of that uh, canon was January 23rd so that became the date of the celebration and then from the 17th century more and more countries began to celebrate this feast day and Pope Benedict the 13th in 1725 adopted it for all the papal states as a uh, feast that was on the calendar. And so we continue this tradition of celebrating the espousals of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph. And the theological basis for the feast is found in the gospel that we heard today. Uh, this narrative of the union that Mary and Joseph entered into before they receive the message of the archangel. And there are reasons, uh, various fathers of the church give reasons, speculative reasons for why God willed this. But I would prefer in the homily today just to look at a particular aspect of this virginal marriage. Uh, there are, it's, it's rather rare, but there are a number of couples within the history of the church, holy couples, who opted for a virginal marriage. And today, as the world and the church face a crisis of marriage and the family, it's useful to see the great value in this marriage, which was virginal and chaste, for so many couples today who are united in invalid or irregular marriages that perhaps there is no uh, legitimate way to regularize as a union of two persons in the carnal sense, but for various reasons may, uh, it may be beneficial for them to stay together and live as brother and sister. And this is something that uh, the church has permitted in certain situations and really, I think, is the only legitimate option for couples who, for instance, come from a history of divorce and remarriage. And the world objects to the idea, just out of hand, the idea that a married couple should abstain from carnal relations and live as brother and sister. But that's just a prejudice of our time and of our uh, fallen world and our fallen culture, but Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph point to another option, a holy option that was in fact very fruitful because founded in the will of God, uh, it was the condition that God chose for Jesus to come into the world. And Jesus is the head of the church, the head of the mystical body. And so the fruit of this virginal marriage really is the, the mystical body of Christ, which is all of us. So we all benefit from the marriage of 
the chaste Virgin Saint Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary. The happiness of Joseph and Mary then is an attraction to which all married couples can look to and and draw uh, strength and motivation from because uh, they were very happy. Their union was not carnal, but it was a legitimate, true union of two souls. And they were motivated then by, first and foremost, a love of God and a desire to do His will. And the fact that they could be so happy together is the sign that other couples also who, to whom the carnal union is prohibited by the moral law and by the Ten Commandments can still enjoy companionship, enjoy the mutual affection and esteem in a chaste manner basing that marriage on the higher values, the highest of which, of course, is the uh, function of helping the other, the spouse, to achieve salvation. There are various reasons why uh, abstinence from the carnal union can still, does not pose an insurmountable obstacle to happiness. Um, in the case of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, two persons unacquainted with the pleasures of the flesh, it's something that they don't miss. And this can be true for, for any two persons who would, a man and a woman who would enter into such a relationship. And as I said, there, there are cases um, down history where for love of uh, salvation and the desire to pursue sanctity, a man and a woman might enter into such a marriage. And this has happened, especially the cases I recall were between royalty who were sort of by circumstances required to get married and yet had chosen in their heart to live a virginal life. Another reason uh, why we can see a benefit is that experience teaches that indulgence in the carnal union and, and pleasure can lead to slavery, a sort of bondage where there's a dream and a desire that's pursued but never fulfilled. And of course, this can deteriorate if that's the basis of a marriage, the, the, the aspect of lust, let's say, uh, if that's the basis of the marriage, so many of those marriages end up in uh, separation and divorce, which is, we're looking at the widespread fruits of such an approach to marriage, unfortunately, today, and why a need to uh, rehabilitate marriage through, through an appreciation of, of righteous, holy chastity and those, those married, divorced and remarried persons who cannot separate uh, can at least live a chaste life and avoid sin and avoid that bondage then. And then also, if someone has known the pleasures of the flesh and yet desires to live a chaste and holy life now, uh, making that break with uh, the love of sin or the love of pleasure can eventually become a liberty, a liberation. So we look to this plan of God for the Holy Family also as a, a source of, um, as a way out of sinful situations for so many couples today, a way out of sin and a, a pathway to true fulfillment and happiness in the will of God. And we ask 
St. Joseph and Blessed Virgin Mary to intercede for all of those families in those situations, to show them the light and to show also our prelates, our bishops, our cardinals, uh, that this is the true intention of God and the only legitimate possibility for uh, a proper interpretation uh, of the church's teaching. Praise be Jesus and Mary.